Hello there beautiful humans and welcome to the video. I am so excited that spring is almost here. I really can't wait another minute. I'm going to go and uh, and detect my waterfront. I walked along here with hubby and the dog uh, yesterday and I found a rather exciting looking um, washout on the beach so I'm going to investigate that first. So stick around and we'll see what I can find. As you can see there's still a lot of ice it's still ice covered, although it's pretty rotten. All the fish huts have been removed. No more ice fishing, sorry folks. And you can see how how thin the ice is now. It's bunching up on the shore there. So that's being affected by the winds. And here is my brand new shovel. I am super excited about this shovel. I invested in it. It wasn't cheap, but I took advice from a fellow Canadian detectorist, uh, Relic Dirty Hands, and I will put a link to the uh, to their channel in my description. Uh, they um, they compared a number of shovels and digging tools that they themselves use, and this one is the Piranha by Predator and it looks pretty ferocious. They also recommended the White's Hand Digger, which I also purchased. Look at that bad boy. Look at the teeth on it. Last year I was using the digger that I purchased along with the uh, the secondhand Fisher F44 from a sweet gentleman in London and um, it was a Gator brand and it had very small serrations. It was adequate for what I was doing but I really want to step it up to the next level. So now I've got my digging tools. I feel like a real intrepid gal out here for sure and it is blinking freezing. So I don't know how long I'll last. Thank goodness detectorists wear gloves. Here's that washout I was talking to you about. So I'm going to put the earphones on so I don't mess people up with my beeps. And I'm going to start swinging along this area and see if it has uncovered any pirate doubloons. Okay, check with you later. My first two targets are rusty nails. I don't know what this is. It's big iron. scrub. I'm not sure I want to carry that around with me. I might just put it in a bin. Cool. I found myself a letter P. Now help me out, gentlemen and car-loving ladies. Is that from a Plymouth or a Pontiac? I'm going to take the shovel back to the car because I don't need it here. I tried it on the beach. It's good for that. It would be good for for rough digging, but uh, here I don't need to make plugs that big. Just to prove that I clean up after myself, can you see my plug? That's right there. I have to say I'm impressed. The F44 on artifact mode, sensitivity of 20, found a twist tie down six inches in beach sand. How about that? I'm consumed with disappointment, my lambs. I really am. I had the most perfect gold signal. It was between 30, 32, 35. It was completely repeatable in both directions. It was just as sweet as can be. And so, being in the children's playground under the wood chips I dug, so far so good. Then the wood chips were frozen. Then the soil, then the soil was frozen. I chipped away with my new white digger and it is the bomb, but still it was very tough sledding. And after all that, what do you suppose it was? Was it gold? No, it wasn't. It was a mangled up pull tab. Oh my goodness, did that ever fool me? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, my pull tabs have always been about 42. This one just blew me away. But the other one that I found just before that was folded in half lengthwise and it rang up in a gold tone too. So, hmm, you got to dig the pull tabs, I guess, to get the beautiful golden rings. So that's still to come for me. Pull tabs, not so much. The gold, yeah, that's still on my bucket list. Anyway, I'm frozen to the bone, my lambs, so I'm going to go home and I will talk to you at the wrap up. Good morning, beautiful humans, and welcome to the video. 
It's a frosty March Saturday morning about 7.15 and I think I must be crazy to be out here. It's blinking cold, but I think perhaps the little park will be uh, vacant. So I'm going to take a swing around and see what I can find. This is the park that I looked at uh, a couple of weeks ago when I was jonesing to go out metal detecting. So here's my chance and let's see what I can find. Well, my dearies, I'm not so sure of the wisdom of this. <laughs> it's blinking cold, like I said, and uh, I uh, I got out to the car and there was frost on it and my water bottle is completely frozen and yeah, I think the ground is going to be rock hard. So I've just stopped at a little neighborhood parkette where there's a tiny tot lot. I'm gonna have a look through the sand and uh, see what I can find. Maybe nothing. Maybe my wrists will be broken by the time I get back to you. Anyway, this channel is all about being intrepid and finding that which is lost. So let's see if I've lost my mind. <laughs> I'll get back to you at the first plug if I can dig it. Here's where I am. It's just a little children's playground, probably about the size of a modest house. And I'm going to put my gloves back on immediately because it's blink and freezing. Fortunately, it's sand, and uh, I think that will be diggable once I get through the top crust, which isn't too deep. Here's hoping. I'm always glad to find a coin. So there's a dime. <laughs> this is really rough going. My thumb is absolutely frozen. Anyway, it's my own fault. But I'm 10 cents richer than I was. This is the first repeatable, properly repeatable signal I've got. My guess is a Canadian penny. Hmm, really close to the surface. Maybe it's a pull tab. We'll see. I guessed correctly. It is a penny. I can't at present see how, uh, what date it is. But uh, yeah, I'll check that when I get home. Called it. I can't believe it. It's another sock. I find socks every time I hunt a park. I hear a theme coming on. Auntie's adventure assortment and sock finding. Well, my dearies, that hunt was uh, was cut a little bit short because I got a call from the painter that he needed me to unlock the door and let him in so he could finish the staircase. So first things first, my house renovation is more important than than the freezing cold metal detecting in the park. Anyway, I'm going to go out a little later uh, after the sun has warmed the ground a little bit and see if I can find something else. So for now, I'm warming up with a cup of tea and I will talk to you soon. I'm out again. Uh, it's afternoon now and the sun has been on the, the ground for a while. It's still pretty cold and this sports field of this high school is really still covered, but the edges are exposed, so I'll take a little swing along there and then see what happens. If I get an interesting signal, I'll check in. Oh, I hate these with a passion. They sound so good, but they're just the Mylar liner from a bottle cap. Arg. I am getting so good at clocking these pennies under the ground. If it's a repeatable signal around 64, I'm pretty confident, pretty confident that that's what I've got. This is a 1984 penny. It's probably upside down. I can't see. There's a lot of glare. First coin in the schoolyard, and I'm glad to have it. I sure wish I could get as uh, confident with clocking the signal for a $5 gold piece, but uh, I'm sure I'm going to 
dig a lot more pennies than gold. I really had to commit to this one. Look at that. And look at my knee. <clears throat> but this was worth getting a wet knee for. That's one of those Jubilee quarters from 2002. That's better than a penny. I'm that much closer to my retirement fund. This rang up really low for a penny, but it is a penny. I thought it was an American one at first. It, it rang up around 50. So I thought I was actually chasing a pull tab, but uh, it's a Canadian zinc. I think it's from 2004. What a strange signal. Up here in Canada, you have to dig the junky signals because it's our coins. They sound like heck. This is a steel penny, so it's probably from the early 2000s. I don't know that I'll get a date off it. I'll have to probably put it in the electrolysis to get anything. Is it worth it? Probably not. Still, it's a coin. And I'm still getting practice in finding out what things sound like. In this case, it sounds like trash. Hello again, beautiful humans, and welcome to the wrap-up for my Friday evening hunt at the shore and the Saturday, the freezing cold early March Saturday at the parquet and then in the afternoon at the high school. I've combined all the finds here for your viewing pleasure. I had some surface junk. Um, first off, I'll tell you that at the uh, at the shore there was very little uh, that I could find. I found a couple of that big piece of rusty iron a couple of rusty nails, um, two pull tabs, one folded flat horizontal or vertically, and one mashed up, both of which sounded like gold, darn it. And that super nifty letter P, which I will show you in a minute. And at the parquet, I found a dime, and that was about it, a bottle cap, uh, before I had to come back and uh, rescue the painter who needed to get in and work on my staircase. So the most of these finds come from the high school, and a lot of them were on the surface. So here we go. Lots of fun. I've got a, a poppy with no insides. Um, that was on the surface, obviously. A sailboat sticker, bread bag tag, lump of plastic. The exteriors of a highlighter piece of a calculator. That's a dollar store calculator. This looks like a chunk of Lego. A little plug converter adapter thing. Uh, what is this? I thought this was a battery, but it might be a capacitor or something. I, I really don't know. That's trash. This used to be a badge. It's lost its plastic cover, it's lost its pin, it's lost most of its message. It's in French, on a something. One is something. Uh, yeah, no, whoops. Well, there you have it. Uh, bottle cap, bottle cap. These wrappers for gum and pills, boy, they ring up. Twist ties, foil. My bet noir, the bottle cap liner, those ring up like coins. They sound so good. Piece of can slaw, foil, foil, foil. These are the plastic containers for uh, pencil leads, for mechanical pencils. And these are their lids. This, I think, is a stick for an ice cream bar. Pen and so many pencils. This, these were all in one area of the schoolyard. So it, it, I don't know if the students were outside drawing, maybe doing an outdoor art class. No idea, but look at them all. And of course, the schoolyard find the pencil end. And boy, do those ring up loopy. They have the craziest, bounciest, wobbliest signal you can imagine. So yeah, there it is. What a what a bunch of stuff. Maybe a couple of those pencils are reclaimable. 
Not this one, though. This one I actually found by the signal off the metal end. This has been down in the soil long enough to have become compost. All right, let's move along to the metallic finds and the more recognizable finds. I honestly don't know what this is. I thought it was just a piece of aluminum foil, but it has a staple through it. And it has a paper liner. I kind of unfolded it and here is this paper liner. So it was folded flat like this. I don't know, folks, if you can tell me what that might be. Aluminum trash. This is a magnet. Well, of course, there's nothing for it to stick to. Hang on. Let me find something with some iron to it. <laughs> I threw all my iron away. What a drag. Take it from me. It's a magnet. Now, it looks like it was on some kind of pivot. There's these two ears. So my thinking is it was on some kind of pivot. So that begs the question, is this part of an electric motor? Chime in and help me out. I got a zipper pull. This is a nifty little aluminum top off a dome, I think, you know, like the snap that you would find on a jeans button, maybe, or the snap you would find on a boat cover. You know what I'm talking about. This button says sub-level. If I can get it to focus, come on. Don't be mean. There, sub level. I'll have to find out what that means. Some kind of clothing company. It makes me think of the buttons that Nicola White and Simon Bourne and all the other London mudlarkers find. They have the maker's mark around. It's a similar style but they would have the maker's mark saying Mr. XYZ of Wanstead or some such. Sub-level. Well, we'll see. Pull tabs galore. These are the two naughty, naughty pull tabs that practically gave me heart failure. They rang up so sweetly. They rang up just the way I imagine gold would ring up. And I think it's because they're folded lengthwise. They gave me a solid 35. Hmm. Meanies. Here's a hair clip. It's not going to hold any hair now. Two forks, not one, but two. This one was under the ground. It's, I think, an Oneida, if I can get the mark to show. Yeah, Thor by Oneida. A little bit bent. So that one was under the soil. This one was on the surface. This is a hefty enough fork. This is not a dollar store fork by any means. Let's see if I can find the number for you, the name. There it is, Lagostina. Yeah. Mom was probably pretty miffed when she found that the, the those forks were not coming home. Alrighty, my letter P, which hubby, the gearhead, tells me is from Plymouth. I knew it came off a car. I remember I remember these letters marching across the back of a car, you know, bump, bump, bump with the spaces in between. 
So that was in the lawn, in the park area above the waterfront. And I don't recall the classic cars being parked there because normally they're parked in another area. But perhaps in a time before I lived in this town, that's what they did. And somebody's riding around in a limoth because they've dropped their pee and now it's mine. And I found some coins. A 1989 Looney, 2002 quarter, 1994 dime, two 2016 dimes, a 2001 nickel, copper pennies, 1978, 1983, 1987, 1989, 1996, and then the rot sets in. 2006, two of them. 2007, that one doesn't look too bad. Not too bad, could be worse. These really aren't worth focusing on. I'm gonna put it back down on the table. And then the ugly. So there's the good, the bad, and the ugly. Dateless. Canadian zinc, dateless, Canadian zinc, dateless, U.S. Memorial zinc. See the memorial there? I don't think you can even see Abe. No, there's just a smooch where Abe would be. So thanks very much, American neighbor, but I do believe that's going to go in the garbage. So there you have it, my friends. Some kind of interesting spoils from the schoolyard the park and the shore. And I'm looking at these things and thinking, you know, I can I can use them for artworks like this will will eventually become the beak of a bird. And I can make feathers out of pull tabs and fish scales out of zinc pennies. So, all is not lost. Make sure you come back and see what I managed to make. And in the meantime, Here's Auntie waving goodbye. Thanks for coming along, and I'll see you soon.